Hi, and it's uh, Bob from Lapbook here. Uh, day two of Lapcon, and I've got a Heaven with me from Steeweave. Steeweave? Steamweave, it's Steamweave. Honestly, Heaven is Steamweave. I do know how to pronounce your game's <laughs> name. So, uh, hi, hi, Heaven. Hello, how are you doing? You all right? Yeah, I'm fine, thank you. So, I know Steamweave is a kind of a horror steampunk game, but do you want to give us a little idea about what it is and what's going on, what's coming up? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, whilst Steamweave is a horror system and it's got steampunk elements, um, Steamweave is actually a high fantasy LARP. Okay. So, it's set in a world we call Averthia, and it's a high fantasy world. All your usual tropes, to be fair. It was based years ago on my Dungeons and Dragons campaign, so that's where it found its roots. Ah. Um, but in the more recent years, as the players have found out, certain Victoriana steampunk elements came through from another world and has infected Averthia with the uh, the steampunk stuff we see walking around now. So, uh, yeah, there's a, there's a mix of everything in there now. Okay, that's that's actually. A bit really cool and fast and it's basically what happens if a fantasy game picks up steampunk technology yeah. and the whole lot gets into a mix absolutely yeah so it's it's quite a surreal thing sometimes because you get the real diehard traditionalists who'll play completely fantasy character and that's their bread and butter and that's what they want to be involved in mm. you might get others who have truly embraced the steampunk element and they are very flamboyant you've got all the guns the pocket watches, the hats, the lot, you think, okay. Hey. And then every now and again, you'll get a plate mail dwarf run past carrying a shotgun, and you think, okay, <laughs> okay. Like, yeah. look, I keep this handy for close encounters. Fair play, <laughs> no worries. <laughs> okay, that sounds absolutely fun. <laughs> okay, I can't, sorry, I can't help giggling, but that just sounds absolutely fun. <laughs> <laughs> no. It's, yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun. And I think one of the questions I get asked a lot is how you balance a game that predominantly would be involved in the more traditional lot combat weapons, so your yeah. sword and board and using daggers yeah. with foam dart firing systems as we call them, yeah. nerf and various other produced yeah. like, missile weapons. Yeah. And uh, yeah, the, the balance on that, I think it's quite surprising for a lot of the people that come and have played so far. Yeah. The guns don't overpower the game. Some creatures they're more effective against, some they're a lot less effective against. Yeah. And it's for each individual to realise sometimes when the firearm might not be the most appropriate and other times when it's absolutely the best thing to have to hand. Right, <laughs> so that, that, that's actually not overpowering the game, it's adding another element as in, wh what should I be doing right now? <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. And I think, um, I think for anyone that considers this type of game, whether it's another producer or another player, yeah. one of the things that we've loved about the Nerf guns and their elk. The thing we love the most about them is individuals that may be a little bit more mobility challenged or mm -hmm. maybe a bit more non-com. Yeah. Our non-com rules are very simple. You are allowed to engage in combat by firing at stuff. And so we quite often have non-coms that will keep shooting up until the point where they are then immediately threatened. Mm -hmm. And at that point, they simply raise their hand to acknowledge that, okay, that that would be me done you know yeah that's it and then they accept their death count and they're down they are either slump in the chair or relax back a bit or take a knee whatever's more appropriate for them and yeah but it still gives everyone the chance to get stuck in when the zombies come crawling because they do come crawling <laughs> okay, i actually really like that because it, it it really it, i'm trying to get the right words out now here and you avoid it <laughs> i know i'm stuttering but uh yeah so so now we so that really opens up the game then. It's, it's not, you cannot, it's like, if you can, you can. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. And um, even, I think one of the most surprising things is having individuals that previously have played very robust combat characters, yeah. who have then embraced the more non-com side of the game and gone, I'm retiring from the combat side, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try this out. Yeah. Because the game has got a lot behind the scenes and a lot that goes on if you wanna look for it. So there's plot and politics, it's huge there's, there's so much of that going on behind yeah. that um the trade and the commerce in the system yeah. is massive and yeah. like really well invested in the game so everything there's resources for everything and you can go out and you can find individual resources for anything you could want to make mm -hmm. you can make things there's different places where like the hubs for example yeah. we've got over 80 hubs and right. like fauna and flora in the game yeah and they grow in different locations different areas they're more prevalent in different weather conditions and stuff like that. So even the weather of the weekend will dictate how well certain types of the plants will grow. And that's therefore a greater resource to find. 
Yeah, there's uh, there's a lot for people to get out there. Oh, it does sound that way, and it does sound like it's, it's, it's a really sort of integrated, breathing world as well, which is great. Now, one other thing I want to ask you, ask you about as well is, that, is, is there's a community aspect of Steamweave, isn't there? There is, yes, yes. So um, we wanted Steamweave to be a community game, um, very much like, for those of us that enjoy, as uh, Sir Ian Livingstone put it earlier, <laughs> for those of us that love getting around the table with our friends, yeah. what can we do? So we made Steamweave a very community system. So Steamweave itself is a LARP, live action role play. Uh, yeah. LRP or LARP, depending on what you what you want. I have no comment. That's too hot a subject to touch. You know, I'll be political. But there's more to the game than that. So yeah. the game started years ago, as I said, as a Dungeons and Dragons campaign. Yeah. It's become a campaign system all over parts of the UK because I've been across all over parts of the UK. Yeah. So then everywhere I've been that set up the campaign, yeah. others then took over DMing it on my behalf and continued running it so there's a lot of players that play tabletop yeah. so we've developed a role-playing game for the tabletop and a mass battle combat system and other yeah. gaming elements that then the players can come together and and play right. but we have the occasional uh, hobby weekend where you can come barbecue up camp up play board games yeah. just yeah just just get in there you know even the game of frisbee we've done it all it's uh, yeah it's nice to just meet other LARPers when is it LARP safe I don't I will, I will dispute the word LARP safe. Nothing is LARP safe, according to my insurer. It's LARP appropriate. <laughs> and so long as your risk assessment is LARP appropriate, life's good. So it's a LARP appropriate Frisbee because, yeah, yeah we, had it made by, <laughs> we had it made by one of the guys here. So. <laughs> yeah. And that is definitely then a LARP appropriate Frisbee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've been hit with it enough times in the face. I don't think people are aiming for my face, but they might be. But yeah. yeah. Okay, so it's a face it's a face finding lab appropriate frisbee. Absolutely. It's like <laughs> heat seeking. I feel the heat on my cheeks. Yeah. yeah. You get me. Okay. Oh that's fantastic here. And thank thank you so thank you so much for that. Really appreciate it. You taking some time to talk to us. No, thank you for having me. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Okay, so that, that's here and see me. So we've just gotten a bit a lot more detail there with that lab. Um I'm loving the sound of it. I'm really hoping I can get there real soon. So uh, this is Rob signing out for now. Bye.